The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show that's brought to you with Levi Solicitors. You can get a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan here with Michael and Rob is on the show today. Propaganda the show where we find out what's being said about Leeds United by you and by the opposition fans. If you're listening to the audio version, you can check this out on YouTube and vice versa. Um, We'll do the Leeds United half first. Uh, We got our TSB Plus members to send feedback on the match ball. Uh, so this is the stuff that they picked about picked out from that show and from the game itself. Um, we didn't quite win ugly, we drew ugly, I think is the, the fairest description of it. Um, but it's another point on the board. And I think the, the general span of opinion is from misery to pragmatism and then some stuff somewhere in between. <laughs> There's probably on balance more negativity than anything else, but... Most a lot of the negativity is tinged with, but you know, it's hard not to be fine. negative yeah. when you're sixteenth in the table. Mm. Well, I mean, you obviously weren't here for the match ball, Rob. What did you make of it as a whole? Thrilling. I mean, I I felt like after the Watford game, I was too negative and pessimistic, and I thought, Do you know, what? I'm going to make a real effort to be positive, and then watch the game. Uh, which yeah, it was a very very hard game to love. Let's say that, but I think. After Watford, I think, yeah, there's just an acceptance of we need points. That's what it's about now, isn't it? It's about results and not mm. performances. So, yeah, a good result. I I, um, I had some feedback on this via... Uh, so, Greg, who is a guy in America. Hello, Greg. Uh, he hangs around in LA, lives there. He's um, he's going to watch the, the Arsenal game with former Leeds United legend... Robbie Elliott. You remember, obviously, mm. Robbie's seven games fondly in, yes. in 2000. I haven't interviewed Robbie Elliott about those seven games. <laughs> well, well, we were we were chatting, Greg and I, um, the other day, and he was saying that Robbie Elliott had said to him, draws will keep you up. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've found it quite interesting seeing everyone else's reaction kind of outside of Leeds United, like outside of a fan base. And, and on Monday Night Football, Carragher and Robbie Keane were, you know, talking about Jesse Marsh's point proven and mm. he's proven all the doubters wrong. This is good. This is how you should be in a relegation battle. So, I don't know. Yeah, a couple of people <laughs> think this is good. This is the Premier League, isn't it? It feels like there's a, almost a weird desire for us to be more like this throughout the Bales mm. era. Like last year, people, when we lost heavily but finished ninth, people, some people were like, no, you need to be more respectful of the Premier League. You've got to, you can't play like that. And it, people are like, good. They're going and grinding out yeah. ugly points. That's the way it should be, which I guess is tough for us to watch. But you as, know. But as we're saying on the match ball, Michael, it's not a binary choice, is it? And it's no. not about, We could defend doggedly like we are doing, but also be try, try and be more expansive going forward mm. and by more expansive I mean passing to our own team <laughs> yeah I mean that I, might be a start, I do know. think we would have lost that game a couple of months ago as well yeah. so you know it, a, a point from that perspective yeah, is definitely good and both things can be true at the same time that you know the pragmatism was needed but it's not particularly nice to look at uh, mm. but if it's if it keeps us up I'll be absolutely delighted if we get to um, post Brentford in another was it four weeks now mm. and we're still in the Premier League I'll be like alright it's been a horrible year but uh, so be it we've stayed up yeah I think so as well it's it's interesting from the feedback a couple of people felt the need to get in touch on 75 minutes (laughs) someone with no name and John P both got got in touch Um, no name was predicting complaining about a loss to Palace they were they were guessing that we would concede in those last minutes which we I suppose we did look a bit like conceding there were there were chances weren't they not brilliant ones but there yeah. were half there were half chances for people weirdly i never felt like we were going to concede in that game even though we were under the cosh for a lot of it it was in, in an odd way because we seemed to be that much more defensively resilient yeah I, I didn't quite feel as stressed i felt a lot more stressed during the watford game for some reason i don't know if that was just because they were so rubbish as well it felt like god we've got to beat these but well, it was it was the must win because it was a six point, yeah, wasn't yeah. It? yeah but this one i was i don't know it was just a little bit boring like the last 10 minutes so i was kind of glancing at my phone to see what everyone else made of it because I didn't really want to watch two teams just pass the ball to each other um, chatting to our art wizard Eamon but, and he made the point that he looked up and there was 70 minutes gone and it felt like 20 minutes later he looked up and there was still 70 minutes gone it just <laughs> felt like the game that was never going to end yeah it did. It was a bit like um, those many games at Ellen Road where you'd you'd look at it and you'd be thinking oh fuck it <laughs> there's, there's more of this, there's more of this to watch is the, whereas we've not had that for such a long time have we um, no we, we, we were spoiled for 
three and a half years. Yeah. I mean, it's, I know it's not been particularly effective versus the years before it, the Bielsa football, but it is undeniably a, a beautiful thing to watch, even if it's completely flawed at the same time. Yeah, and, and, uh, and we were asking for pragmatism, and we've got it. So, nowhere, man. Actually, making the comparison, saying there's been a lot of comparisons with the height of Bielsa ball, but we haven't seen that this season. It's mostly been awful. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is absolutely true. We, we tried to do Bielsa ball, but we weren't very effective at it, were we? Yeah, that's, we, that's, we weren't able to do that, and now we're not able to do <laughs> this thing either. Which is, I mean, we 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 kind of touched on it of knowing what this is meant to be because I'm sure this isn't what Marsh wants like mm. this can, this can't be his plan and he, he touched on it in his post game stuff didn't he that this was not the the attacking side of it wasn't as he, he hoped for it to be and that's I guess that's pretty obvious when you watch it because you know there, there isn't any there's no kind of passing there is that there's something is not working and I think it maybe is the fact we still don't have a striker yeah and we're still lacking bodies in midfield and I guess that but that was the inherent risk wasn't it as we were saying on the match ball of changing the manager when we did rolling the dice knowing that we don't quite have the squad either to do what Bielsa wanted to do or mm. what Marsh wanted to do and I guess it goes back to the failures of last summer doesn't it and we'll know in another few weeks time whether they got it catastrophically catastrophically wrong or whether they did just enough I think that's the thing yeah they they made such a big change we were almost kind of looking over what's the new big idea going to be but it's just not the time to judge that yet I guess because like I say we're still dealing with all these same problems and Marsh has had however many weeks and not had a pre-season or a transfer window to change that so yeah it's kind of like I know this is Marsh's tactics and style but it's not how he wants it to look is it no so, and it'd, it'd just be nice to have a few more glimpses of that I guess because against Leicester it felt like oh yeah we can see the differences in this and we can see how it might work whereas the more recent games have been a bit turgid and Marsh himself it's the Southampton game he came out and says yeah it was a bit rubbish that wasn't mm-hmm. it and then after Watford he came out and said yeah it weren't great on the ball then will we and after the, the Palace game he's done the same so it's three games in a row where it's been a bit like yeah that's not what we want yeah Tom in the comments that we've received uh, says it's going to require some very slick passing from our tens to correctly execute what Marsh wants us to do and those feeding them and then a high quality finisher to put the chances away so it's all those points isn't it all the all the deficiencies in the squad that we've talked about are exactly there what, what Tom's on about I think we can all see it can't we I think what it is and the reason why we're seeing so much of this this polarised argument on Twitter of Marsh versus Bielsa which is just it's just a lot of wasted energy in my opinion and I, I can't be bothered wading into it because there's truth on both sides of it mm. Um it's just filling the void between now and knowing, knowing our fate, whether it, whether it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. And even if we do go down under Marsh, there'll still be arguments. People say, well, we're going down under Bielsa anyway, so they had to make the change. It's like, it's just, mm. it's just nature hating hey, a vacuum again, isn't it? And filling it with I do, something. A few people have mentioned James as a striker as well, just pointing out that it's really not working. And when we're trying to feed off scraps and it doesn't stick up front at all, it, it does create a problem for us because is, is it intended to stick though, Michael? That's what I, well, I, I think, would wonder because the, the nature of March football is it's all transitional, isn't it? It's a high speed transitional, stick the ball in behind them, and unfortunately, because we haven't yet got accustomed to passing through the midfield in the penis formation or whatever mm-hmm. it might be, they're just going for the more direct. It feels like if it's up to, if it's up towards Bamford though, there's more of a chance of him getting something on it which if nothing else means if the ball deflects off to one of their players, it's not in a comfortable way and then Harrison or Rafinha or someone will then press the if it drops the fullback for example they then press the fullback who might give it away and then you win it back and you score from that transition whereas it feels like with James up front it's generally if it, anything high is a very comfortable header for a centre back because they're a foot taller than him and it's not really his game is it so I, I don't feel like he looks comfortable doing it he looks less comfortable as a as a striker in this formation than he did mm. under Bielsa as well it's interesting actually when you compare us to what Palace did and I think Palace weren't playing a, a style too dissimilar to what we're trying to achieve um, in the I, mean, I think I mentioned this on, on the match ball actually that we you know when they were hitting IU in the mm. inside right channel in the first half there was a lot of that going on it was early balls but they were finding a man in space rather than punting it to a midget who's up against a massive <laughs> centre back you mm. know so I think it's just been a bit more street smart isn't it with, with where you can find those spaces you know and they, they must try and find them at least I know we play narrow but part of the surely the, the tactic is going to be to find pockets of space because going and standing next to people doesn't work <laughs> yeah I mean I mean you're a coach I, uh, yeah you've got some expert opinions on this so let's compare it standing next to people or standing next to some space I think when you've not got the ball standing next to people's good 
mm-hmm. when you have got when you your team has the ball try and get away from, from right. the other people um, into an area where you can receive the ball and then what, comfortably. What, what, what then because bloody hell this is pass com- it to someone else who's done the right. same thing and you keep doing that until until you get someone in the box and then they kick it really hard into the goal bloody hell <laughs> Simple. It's a simple game. <laughs> oh, should, we, oh, you know, should we get in touch with them and just say, listen, if you need some assistance? Get this bit edited out because we don't want to give away our plans to other oh, that's, yeah, we're peps a, listening. Crucial. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a crucial stage. <laughs> Speaking of that level of coaching, actually, um, Jelly got in touch to say that it confused his six-year-old because um, he said he let his son stay up to watch the match, but prom- uh, wouldn't let his son stay up to watch the match, but promised he could watch the highlights in the morning. He was absolutely bewildered when it finished without one for us. <laughs> <laughs> Which Which is, did we not have any highlights in the pack? I mean, not that, I mean, to be fair, the fact that I didn't go and watch it, and I don't know, probably answers we, that question. We didn't question. have any shots, did we? There was there was one where Rafinha cut in, and it looked like he had a chance, but then he got blocked. And then Gelhart really tamely hit a left mm. footer at the keeper. I think that yeah, that was the thing. I wanted to watch the game back to sort of see what happened and why maybe it didn't work from our point of view. But then I thought I don't want to watch the, <laughs> the actual ninety minutes back. It was just not fun. There's a weird vibe. Um, Scrooge is picking out the weird vibe. Like we're five games unbeaten and two clean sheets which is what Jesse Marsh picked out in the post-match as the positives to take from that and it's absolutely true it mm. is um, he said it was like someone telling me about a dead good TV series like The Wire and enticing me to watch it and then trying really hard to like it but ultimately losing track of what the plot is and putting something better on Com- just, comparing just, this game to The Wire is wrong yeah because The Wire <laughs> is a masterpiece has to be said, <laughs> yeah. but we are evang- evangelists for The Wire um, yeah. but there, and there isn't anything better to put on quite N- frankly no this was more like but I take the point yeah this was more like um an episode of Coronation Street spread out over 90 minutes is what I would say <laughs> it, was that, it was that kind of a, a level I would suggest yeah but um, Jelly, uh, not Jelly Scrooge sorry says uh, just everyone else please lose that is one of the themes that seems to be annoying people like so we shouldn't have to rely on other teams we should do it ourselves but surely the whole point of a league table system is that other people will lose and you take advantage of that by getting slightly more points than them and you know, the truth is you don't win many games down at the bottom so. no and if we if we just did it all ourselves are you saying we need you know we're going to get another 15 points this season and finish finish ninth again it's not likely is it so no. I, I must admit I didn't see Burnley's good run coming mm. that's upset me a bit well we'll talk about all that properly in in relegation watch over on uh, which which is basically here for the for the long haul now it's here till <laughs> May at least um, but we'll talk about that over on the main show um, when we do it back, back to the themes here um are we wanting to twist the knife a bit more on Zaha for his vicious assault on Rafa's eyebrows? I mean, there was some contact, wasn't there? Um, yeah, questions asked to whether it, it was looked at by VAR. It has to be said, by the way, if you might, may have seen this, you may not have done, but there's a Palace fan account that has uh, pulled the footage from every single incident where Zaha went to ground in that game and declared why he was in uh, the subtext is he doesn't dive because obviously mm-hmm. one of the accusations that's come out in the wake of this is Calvin Phillips saying yeah he dives a lot which anybody through objective eyes can say he does like for example Luke Ayling dives but we laugh at it because it's funny we mm. know what he's doing and he laughs at it he gets yeah. up and he does a little wink and yeah. he's like yeah. all you gotta do is just own it and go yeah yeah he does Zaha does yeah he's, he's great at winning free kicks because he's what is he the most foul player in the Premier League yeah because like, yeah. Grealish has uh, he's made his cut down yeah so it, you know maybe just a bit of self-awareness that's all we're asking for the most fouled list it is basically a list of the players who you know dive yeah like, there's there's absolutely no doubt in it you look at it and you go oh yeah they're all cheats <laughs> but it's amazing what, what, what the bias and the filter puts on it because I looked through that list and I was like yeah fair enough that was a foul yeah maybe he's tripped him up there they've come together there and he has tried to be objective um, in a couple of them but it's always with that subtext stuff but he went to ground because they just ran into each other but then he got straight back up again but the thing is he doesn't he always moans about it though yeah. and it's mm. it's the way maybe it's the maybe it's partly the director's fault but it felt like every time he was fouled as well it cut to a shot of his face with an absolutely incredulous like <laughs> a referee I cannot believe you've allowed yeah. that to stand it's, it's the fact that he doesn't think physical contact should be part of the game yeah. when it, it very clearly is in every other aspect and I, the way I always see it with I think I mentioned this with Grealish last year imagine every player on the pitch going down under that level of contact and you'd be left with an absolute farce you'd be you'd have a completely unwatchable sport because it'd just be every challenge would be two people running into each other and then falling and around, then falling yeah. over like no one would ever be able to run with the ball because and we're not a million miles away from that I think the, genuinely the only thing that prevents it actually is VAR funnily enough because you can look at stuff and say well he's, he's just for example that one with Zaha where he went down the outside of Luke Ayling and um knocked it off inside he was going to try and get the return ball down the line he quite clearly just jumps into his leg and, mm. and this is in this thread of stuff mm. of you know explaining his crimes etc 
It's like you can see he's just run straight into his leg. It may well be a foul, but you can see he's just run into his leg and then gone over. It's just stop fucking it's, moaning. It's really weird how that list of sort of fouls won has become like a thing that is seen as you should be proud of this. It was like the other year when Grealish was at Villa and it was, he's the most fouled player in Premier mm. League history by this huge margin. The Corinthian was, spirit. Yeah, Rob. it was presented as like, he's so good, people are kicking him out of games every week. And it's like, maybe there is an element of that of tactical fouling, but it's also because he's a massive cheat as well. Like, yeah. and, and there's no harm in saying, yeah, the guy dives a lot. Yeah. But it's like, why why is, you've won 100 and odd fouls, like something, that's not football, is it? Like, how <laughs> Have you scored a goal? Have you like, made some assists? And I, was, I mean, they, they were bitching and moaning about the ref as well, not protecting him enough. And there was, there was talk of the ref having complained. That's what Philip said, complained to us about fouling Zaha, wasn't there? Mm. So, sure. <laughs> Zaha, just just to put it in context, 87 times he's been fouled. Even Tony is next on the list with 70. Right. So it's quite a big gap. He's, I mean, he did well in this game to, to improve his margin. He's winning the league by a... By by a margin at the minute. He is, he also, is. if you're a, if you're a Palace fan watching this on YouTube, don't leave a comment. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because what we'll do is we'll just ignore you and then delete it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't be bothered. Yeah, it's not. This isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your bias thing. This is ours, <laughs> and, we think, and we think he's a cheat. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, what were the other themes then before we wrap this uh, this half of the show up? Then um, we've got we've got a lot. We, of, we probably um, didn't talk it enough about the fact people, a lot of people were just saying. It's a point, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all right. It's that's, not... that's the pragmatism I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, and people saying, you know, nowhere man saying there'll be complaints about the system and how we play, but we don't have the luxury of worrying about that at yeah. the moment. And also making the point that you know, this isn't Marsh's team. He's he's come into this and he's doing the best he can with it. And and to go back on the midfield thing, like I'm sure he was probably thinking, well, I'll get Phillips back, then I can have Phillips and Forshaw. Got two two midfielders who are better suited to this, this this kind of the double pivot deeper system and then Forshaw is injured and he's back to playing click there or cock there and he can't quite he clearly can't decide who is the better there because he keeps starting click and then taking him off and likewise up front as well like mm. he's if it is the uh, hit the penalty spot kind of tactics you need Bamford there or actually a striker whereas with James it's not suited to him at all, at all. and Gilhart's kind of had injury issues while he's been here as well um, so yeah, yeah. It's funny, I get Greenwood's sort of passed mm. him a little bit in the pecking order in the short term, hasn't he? And Greenwood's versatility as well, he seems to like him as the 10 or one of the wide 10s, as he likes to call them. But um, yeah, Greenwood does seem to, he really loves him, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair play to him if he if he fits the system. Hopefully he's got a good future because we want as many of the, the lads who we brought in, the younger lads, who we brought through our academy um, <laughs> to be as successful as possible. Oh, he was here from... Oh, since the age of 20. <laughs> 19, yeah. I remember him. Via Sunderland and Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, there was a a general overall feeling, I think, of it being neither here nor there and essentially dragging out the torture, mm -hmm. which is what it is. That's where we are now. Because people were asking during the game, tweeting me saying, "Have you are you in the bathroom yet? Are you walking around the car park? I didn't find that massively stressful mm. against Palace on Monday. I just, I've, I've resigned myself to the fates now in that, whatever happens with this season will happen and it's out of my control now because the stress levels have got so high mm. that I'm choosing not to acknowledge them <laughs> I th I've done similar where I've just I'd no longer think that we're going to get relegated but it's not out of any confidence it's out of just I am not thinking about it's it denial really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that's probably the right word I think as well with the other thing with stressing about a draw is that it is completely dependent on all the results if Burnley had lost even one of those games and we get a point here. We're kind of we're kind of comfortable with it. And if if Everton had Everton got a point um, against Leicester didn't they, in the last minute, if if other teams would stop getting points, a point here would be fine. Like yeah, yeah. not long ago, I thought thirty two points might be enough to stay up because Burnley didn't look like they had any life left in them. <sighs> but then again, you look at the results from the weekend: Everton losing at Liverpool, and we drew, so we've extended by another point mm -hmm. at this stage. And I know. We've got Man City at the weekend. That's the, the caveat there, isn't it? But Everton have got Chelsea. So as long as we match their result, then we're no worse off, but another game has been chalked mm -hmm. off. So hope is all that's left. <laughs> um, yeah, the lack of passing, that's been mentioned by a few people. Uh, and, and again, it's all been caveated. Like Maximo Paz is saying, the standard one point is better than zero points disclaimer, but um, doesn't like the style of football. It describes it as, as dreadful so far. I mean, it says the way they've clearly been told to lump the ball up the pitch feels like football in malpractice. I don't know that they have been told to do that 
I think that's their it's their bastardized version of what Marsh is trying to achieve mm. and it's not pretty at this stage and hopefully it will fall into place if we stay up and we get into next season with reinforcements and the squad's looking a bit more balanced and all that I don't, I don't tactical, think they've been about the problem with tactical plans is as well they all work fine in theory because <laughs> the other team in theory does what you expect them to do and if the other team doesn't do what you expect them to do it's like the old Mike Tyson quote about everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face <laughs> and it's a bit like that you kind of go oh we're, we're meant to do that and then we get around the back because they are out of shape because of this but then if they don't do it you're like ah oh, fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean that's I'm sure a pro- proper manager doesn't just <laughs> isn't resigned to it in the same way but you're like no that's meant that's meant to work I looked at that and that, it was going to work is that what Click was talking to Marsh about like, possibly oh, fuck. <laughs> this isn't working I, I mean I do agree that uh, I think we said this on the match ball and, and Moscow's apprentice in the comments sort of saying that we've kind of we've taken all the good things away as well to a certain extent like mm. we're saying about like Phillips and Rafinha being less effective and you know Phillips is just back from injury so we, we need him to get back up to fitness speed and then you know mesh into the tactical system or whatever don't mm. we first so there is that and hopefully we get um, Bamford back for the last couple of games but we do, we do seem to have kind of um, maybe we, we've narrowed the parameters a little bit in that we've taken away the worst aspects of what mm. we do but we've also lowered our ceiling as well yeah well we have that's how that's how we're set up now we're, we're compact and defensive in a way that we never were before so we do give the ball away a lot but doing so isn't catastrophic because there are still eight players in between the the Pelé with the ball and the goal and they're all zonally marking it so they're not all being completely pulled out of position when when it does go wrong so it's it looks it's just more normal Mm. Yeah, Philip uh, Moscow's apprentice is saying uh, Phillips looked like you're another mill central midfielder. Rafa could have been Andros Townsend after a trip <laughs> to see his hair doctor. <laughs> we look less likely to win, but less likely to lose. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Richard's uh, comment as well. I've learned what marsh ball is: work your bollocks off to win the ball, give it back to them. Work your bollocks off to win the yeah. ball, give it back to them, <laughs> and repeat. I think we had that one on the uh, was it on the comments on the match ball actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah top. Um, top props there to Richard for that because mm-hmm. it's, it's what it feels like at the minute which is not easy is I think it? the pass completion was something like 67% but it felt a lot lower mm-hmm. I'm sure if you looked at passes completion within their half or something it'd be way lower than that it was mm-hmm. terrible against Watford as well I would it is that thing of they all stand closer together even when we're, in the, when we're on the ball so mm-hmm. we can't be counted but I would just love a winger to stand <laughs> on the touchline it would it, just to have that space because it would blow mm-hmm. their minds I think if, like, I mean, God, if, so if, if, you, if you're a long enough time fan to remember it or old enough to remember it there are sort of George Graham Grahamy vibes about this yeah. aren't they like in just getting it done correctly from a basics point of view yeah and that did work yeah. and sure enough which we'll talk about later the year after was better like there was there mm. was more of a plan to it the first year was Let's just get this done. Make sure we don't go down. Be we, we, scored, with it. we scored 28 goals in one season. Do you remember? I remember it really well. I mean, yeah. I don't remember any of the games, obviously. I remember the feeling of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was nothing actually memorable of the games. And if, and if you weren't there, the fans at one point started singing, we'll score again, don't know where, don't know where. <laughs> we'll score again some sunny day. <laughs> yeah, I think we had three nil nils back to back at one point, didn't we? And yeah. everyone was just like, oh my God. Whereas now, three nil nils back to back. Give me them. Yeah, I'd absolutely love that. <laughs> I, I did find the sight of Rafinha taking long throws. Like, oh God, this is what we're doing now. Is it? it reminded me of. Um, do you remember we signed Connor Wickham on loan yeah. after earlier in the season? He'd torn as a part. Was did he play in the six 0 at Hillsborough? And yeah. then within about two weeks at Leeds, he was just on the wing taking long throws. <laughs> I don't think he ever scored for us. Well, there you go. Then part one wraps up of propaganda. Um, we roll forward onto another week. Be interesting to see what next week's propaganda feels like after Man City at home it might be tough to find <laughs> um, any positives but we'll see I mean who have Man United got this weekend <laughs> it doesn't really matter at the moment they're terrible yeah well we, we can laugh about that can't we there's always something um, so thank you for watching and listening to this one flip over to part two um, in your feed which is straight after this the Square Ball Podcast 